Good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to today's Lunch and Learn hosted by Lab Media. Uh, I'm Philip Sanchez, a Director of Membership at the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and it's my pleasure to be here with you today. I want to express our gratitude to Lab Media for organizing this insightful presentation. And I'm honored to introduce our esteemed presenters, Sandra Castro Richards, the CEO and Digital Director of Lab Media, and Alejandro, Alejandra Landluce, uh, who is a Marketing Assistant at Lab Media. Uh, so just to tell you a little about, about Sandra and Alejandra. So Sandra Castro Richards, she's a visionary Latina business owner and an expert in the field of marketing. As a CEO and digital uh, director of Lab Media, she has propelled clients like Spring PCS and Texas Lottery to unprecedented growth. Uh, Sandra and her Google certified team specialize in digital marketing, revolutionizing advertising strategies through data ana analysis and captivating ad creation across various platforms such as PPC Search, Display, YouTube, uh, Native, and Geofencing. Lab Media Digital's partnership with major streaming television platforms, including Hulu, ESPN, HBO Max, and Paramount, has solidified their position as an industry leader. Uh, and Alejandra Lanluce, she's a dynamic marketing assistant at Lab Media. She embarked on an exciting journey from Spain to San Antonio seven years ago. Uh, with a background as a D1 tennis player and a passion for marketing, she holds a BBA in International Business and Marketing from University of the Incarnate Word followed by an MBA in sports management and marketing. Working closely with Sandra Castro Richards, Alejandra discovered her true passion for PPC and streaming campaigns. She's certified professional in Google Ads and Tag Manager, implementing and optimizing campaigns for clients on a daily basis. She has also gained certifications from DSP platforms like Hulu, Ad Manager, uh, Basis Technologies, and Simplify. Uh, so once again, we sincerely appreciate you joining us today and your commitment to enhancing your knowledge in the realm of digital marketing. Uh, so without further ado, I now pass the virtual podium on to our dynamic duo who will kick off our presentation. Thank you, Philip. Um, let me share my screen and make sure that everybody can see it. Okay. And present. There we go. Okay. okay, thank you, Philip, for the introduction and for the opportunity to present Grow Your Business with Digital Marketing. And we're going to talk all the stages and all the steps, and we're going to go in depth and even have questions. The Alejandro will go through, you know, the table of contents. Or... Thank you um, to the Hispanic Chamber for having us today. One quick thing that we want to mention is that Lab Media Digital is the digital arm of a bigger company, uh, 1797 Creative, um, which Sandra is the CEO as well. Um, 1797 Creative was voted as one of the top ad agencies by Better Business Bureau in this past year. So during today's presentation, we're going to be talking about what is digital marketing, uh, how to create a digital marketing strategy, what is Google Ads, um, paid ads, and the different types We'll talk about remarketing, streaming ads, native ads and pre-roll, geofencing and email marketing. And towards the end, we'll have a workshop and then a round of questions. I just want to let everybody know that we're giving out four tickets for the upcoming San Antonio FC versus uh, New Mexico game this Saturday. Um, and we'll get more into it towards the workshop, but just make sure that you're paying attention. And make sure to comment to win. Yes. Okay, what is digital marketing? If you're a business owner looking to expand your brand, there's nothing more important than establishing an online connection with your customers. Digital marketing is a promotion of brands to connect with potential customers using the internet and other forms of digital communication. Some of the key benefits is the global and local reach. As we all know, global is worldwide. So you can see your ads across different time zones, as well as have locally targeted ads for your local reach. Another benefit is targeting specific audiences. We're going to go with this in depth throughout the deck because this is a big feature for all the um, digital campaigns, sorry. And you're going to see, you know, you can reach people through age, through gender, through, you know, all type of demographics as well as interest and user behavior. Um, another thing that's a huge benefit is measurability. 
traditional um, marketing is very limited on measurability, but this is something that digital marketing does really, really well. So we're able to track every metric that's important for your company, whether it's impressions, you know, shares, views, clicks, time on page. And we're gonna go through it further because you're gonna be amazed how measurable this is. Um, real, what's real important, generating quality leads. Well, you can you know, track your customer from the top of the funnel to the bottom through these customized digital channels that we're gonna be talking about. So it's really important that you do a really good digital marketing campaign to generate customers to your website and, and, and ultimately to your store or any online service that you have. Creating a digital marketing strategy. This is one of the most important steps. And this is where I think Lab Media um, Digital excels. We do a lot of research. And so on the top, number one says research on the client and industry. <clears throat> we look in depth at the research. We use a qualitative model, either Scarborough or Marshall Marketing. That's gonna give us in-depth look at the um, audience targeting. So it's gonna tell us who your target audience is per industry. So, um, Qualitative, they, this is the type of research that's done with telephone surveys, and it's usually like done within a six months period, and so then you get it the following year. But this gives us in-depth knowledge. But not only do you get in-depth knowledge on the target audience, you get in-depth knowledge on how they consume media, which is extremely important because these are going to help establish, you know, some of the marketing goals that we're looking down. Another tool that we use you know, that we look at the client and the industry is that we're, we have a program that enables us to crawl the back end of your website so we can look at your organic search and more. So this is real important. So this information is going to let us look at your market share. It's going to let us look at, you know, um, what keywords your competitors are using, as well as potential words that you should be using. Before you continue, um... When we look into the back end of the website, what we're focusing on is on SEO. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that is search engine optimization. So it's basically how good is your presence on, on the web? So if you are, for example, a flower shop and someone looks for flower shops, um, where do you appear on the results of Google? That's the type of research, one of the types of research that we do before starting working with the clients to see how can we improve that? Okay, so in creating a digital marketing strategy, we need to establish marketing goals. And so we talked about the research and this is gonna help because it's gonna show us how, they, how your target audience consumes media. So this is real important, um, as well as what you're lacking when we look at your website and SEO. Identifying your target audience. This is another area that we work hand in hand with clients as well as the research. And most of the time it's a fit, but there has been occasion where it's not. So, and here's an example. We had a client who told us his demographics were women 35 plus. And so he bought a lot of traditional TV and we were buying programming that were very popular like Bachelor and Grey's Anatomy. And I get a call and he's like, you know, what's happened? You know, what happened to my traffic? You know, I'm not getting any customers. I'm like, these are very, very popular shows. How are we not getting your target? So we went back to the research and it looked like it skewed a, le a little heavier, you know, toward males 35 plus. So I moved his um, targeting to adults 35 plus, and then I kept exploring more male 35 plus. And so his numbers kept growing. And then, you know, it's like a couple of years ago, I ran a sh uh, his ad on Victoria's Secrets and I get a call and he's like, what did you do? And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, when I got to work, there was a line outside, outside the door. I'm like, you are a very dominant male audience. You're not female. And what we think happens is, um, you know, the male audience, you know, like they spend all weekend playing sports, golf all weekend or basketball or some kind of sport. And then they wake up Monday morning and their back hurts because, you know, we're all aging. And they tell their wife we need, or their significant other, we need a new mattress. And so basically, the women are going into the store, but the male are the trigger for the ads. And they're telling them, I've seen a great ad and this is where you need to go. So it's really important. So identifying the target audience, that's what we talked about. Setting up your marketing channels. Uh, again, you know, that's going to be based, you know, um, collaborating with the, the client, but we're going to show them what areas that they need to really focus on. 
as well as looking at their budget. This budget will have parameters on what channels we select as well. Creating quality content. Again, we mentioned we're part of a larger agency, 1797 Creative. We have access to web developers. We have graphic artists. We have um, content writers and, you know, um, actually excellent proofers as well. It's real important to establish a brand voice for, your, for our clients and having all of these in place makes it crucial in order to launch a campaign. And then launching your campaign. So we work with the client, you know, basis, basically fulfilling all the metrics above. And then we look and see what campaigns we need to initiate to put the work in. And we actually provide a flow chart and schedule so that they can know what's going on and what the budget is per, you know, marketing channel. Analyze and optimize. We're going to talk about this over and over again because this is one of the biggest features of digital marketing. And this is something that's imperative that you do, that you're constantly looking at the data. So we can look at the data and see if we're, you know, targeting, you know, it's like, a, you know, the results show that the targeting audience is going to be 25 plus or what is it? Because sometimes you will look and you're going to say, why am I higher in this age group? And that's not my target. So you may need to, you know, adjust your, your target audience and, and actually some of your ads. So analyzing and optimizing is ex ex extremely important and essential. One thing that I would like to add is that at Lab Media Digital, when we talk about creating a digital marketing strategy, it's not a straight line that starts with research and ends with analyzing. It's more like a circle. We're constantly going back to step one and we continue research, researching the client, the industry, the new technology advancements, um, or where can we place their ads and how can we optimize their campaigns. So the first marketing channel that we're going to be talking about is Google Ads. Um, let's start with Google. Uh, Google is the leading search platform owning over 84% of market share. Um, there are other search platforms such as Bing, which has increasingly, um, which has increased a lot recently, um, and they also serve ads. However, if you think about it, when we're going to look for something on Google, we always say, let me Google this. We never say let me Bing this. However, um, we are also able to serve ads on Bing, but we like to focus more on Google. So Google Ads is the platform used to create and serve ads on Google um, and on, on all of the Google partners, such as um, Search, YouTube, and Gmail. Google Ads can appear as search ads, display, video ads on YouTube, shopping ads, and even as part of the Gmail advertising program. This type of campaign is highly recommended for all businesses. It's usually the first marketing channel, digital marketing channel, that should be implemented since it is how people first find about your business. Um, these ads are used to promote businesses, sell products and services, raise awareness, and increase traffic to websites. Um, the best thing about Google Ads is that you reach people exactly when they're interested in the products and services that you offer because they're searching for them. But even if they don't know that you offer those products, they may be they may find you on after searching on Google Ads. So as mentioned, paid ads are placed on search engines. They're also referred to as PPC or pay-per-click. Uh, there are multiple campaigns in this um, slide. We can see some shopping ads. However, we're going to be focusing on search display and video uh, since those are the most important ones. Search ads appear on the results after someone enters certain keywords. So search ads are focused on buying those relevant keywords. Um, they, according to research, they increase brand awareness by over 80%. Uh, and they encourage people to take action, like we will see in the next um, slide. On another hand, display ads appear on Google Partners websites and they target people who visited industry-related sites. Display um, is able to reach over 90% of online users. That's why um, for increasing awareness is one of the best type of campaigns. Um, and lastly, video ads, they appear on YouTube. Sandra will talk more in depth about this later. However, YouTube is one of the top four apps uh, regarding time spent by consumers. And video is the preferred um, con uh, consumption method. 
Uh, therefore, placing ads on YouTube is as well very beneficial. So when we're talking about search display video, video may be very easy to distinguish. However, search and display may be a little bit more confusing. Uh, when it comes to search, um, again, we focus on buying keywords. Uh, these results, they appear on um, the search uh, engine and they either say ad or sponsored. So for example, let's say that you're looking for coffee shops near me, all the results that are going to appear on the top of the page, those are going to be considered search ads. Um, as you can see, you can add um, a lot of information. Sometimes as well, you can add pictures and you can add what are called site links, which are all the way down, um, that take people directly to certain parts of your website that you're interested on driving traffic. On another hand, um, here are some examples of display ads. They are much more visual. They can also have videos instead of pictures. However, they do not appear on YouTube as part of the video. Uh, those would be the video ads. Um, this type of ad is much more focused on targeting locations, demographics, interests. So for that same coffee shop that I used for the example of search, um, for a display, they would be targeting, for example, me, um, a recent graduate who lives in San Antonio and loves coffee. Um, and they would serve their ads um, on all of the websites that I'm looking into, such as best things to do in San Antonio. And I would see an ad display ad of the best coffee shop in town. And there we go. It's like display ads are really at the top of the funnel. So you're actually targeting people that look like your targeted audience you know, with your products and services and telling them the benefits. So you can, you know, bring them down into the funnel to, you know, the purchase point. So keywords, um, as I mentioned before, keywords are what search ads uh, focus on and they're the most important part of search. They are extremely useful, but at the same time, very confusing. There's four types of keywords. We have broad, phrase, exact, and negative. And the best way to understand this is with an example. So let's say that you are a tennis club in San Antonio and you're gonna use the keyword tennis club uh, for your ad. If you would make that keyword as a broad match, any, any search that includes the word either tennis or club uh, would have your ad served. So people looking for soccer clubs or tennis rackets, they may have your ads served. When it comes to phrase, um, those two words have to be part of the search. However, they can be additional words. So best tennis club in San Antonio or a tennis club near me, all of those would be considered phrase matches. Lastly, exact, um, it's only those two words, no additions, no change in order, just tennis club. Negative keywords are something that we may not fully understand um, the reason why people would use them. Like I'm just entering the key, this keywords, I don't, I'm not choosing any other thing. Well, negative keywords come in handy when for example, we're having a broad match like tennis club, but we don't want people that are searching for soccer, football, or rackets, shoes, balls, all of that. We would enter those keywords as negative. When it comes to keywords, um, research, is crucial. We spend a lot of time on researching the keywords that are most used for that industry and the cost of the keywords and how are they gonna um, perform for each of our campaigns. And as well, even though the types, some of them may sound worse than the others, when we're talking about search campaigns, we need to have over um, 80 to 100 maybe keywords. Um, and either both um, broad phrase and exact, they all have their benefits. You just need to know when to use them. So the benefits of using Google ads. And again, if, you know, we talked about in the beginning and it continues and um, the benefits just are great. So like targeting your ads. So you can target them by location. You can target by audience targeting. Um, you can also target them like, you know, by timing. There's many, um, ways that you can target, you know, including like day, daytime, frequency, et cetera. Controlling your costs. 
Google doesn't really have a minimum, you know, and we talked about it when we do the planning portion that we're going to look at your competitors keywords. So we recommend, we will recommend a minimum budget so that you can compete competitively with your competitor, but they don't have any cost associated to begin with. You can start as low as, you know, $50, but that's not going to be an effective schedule. So, you know, you can control the cost if you have a client and they're like, I just want to try this out. We caution them by letting them know, you know, this is going to be the spend level in your industry and based on these keywords. And so when we look at the keywords, like what Alejandra mentioned, they're going to let, they provide a lot of metrics. So they're going to look at by your industry and the loca location that you're located and tell us what's a high, low, medium, and what those costs are associated. And that's how we build that budget. Measure success. We talk about this over and over again. There's a lot of metrics associated that you can, you know, get great information. And we're able to do that with Google as well as every other platform. And we're going to talk about the, the metrics down in another slide. Achieve greater, more granular reach. Um, again, Google also offers, you know, enable to, to, you know, actually target your audience with location, with your ads, with the cost. So it's more granular. It's, it allows you to reach digitally engaged potential customers, as we talked about with search, you know, people who are keying in and we're able to track, we're gonna talk about tracking capabilities further, but we're able to track every metric and staying competitive. We can look at the, all of the um, research and data and we know where you, your benchmark is and how to stay competitive above your competitor. So these are all benefits of, of using Google Ads. Remarketing, this is a great tool that Google offers. Um, I think everyone has ex experienced it. So it's engaging audiences that have already interacted with your brand and encourage them to take a desired action. So Google has rules of engagement. So you have to meet certain metrics to use them, but they're all achievable. So if you look at the chart, you know, a visitor goes to a website and let's just say he's, you know, or she put items in the shopping cart and then leave, or they fill out a form and they don't submit. Basically, Google allows us to retarget them and we can set the time of, and the length of time when we continue to follow them on the internet. So we're gonna put more persuasive ads telling them to come back, you know, you, you, you know that great blouse that you're gonna buy or you know, that watch is only on sale for 24 hours more. But these are call remarketing ads and these are, this is a great tool for all campaigns. So as already mentioned, one of the most important benefits about um, paid search is the tracking capabilities. So Google Analytics is the perfect platform to do that. Um, it is a dashboard that integrates your advertising and analytics, creating reports that provide insights on impressions, conversions, demographics, acquisitions, engagements, and even time spent on website. The best thing about Google Analytics is that it's not only used for your Google Ads campaigns, it takes into account um, all the traffic that got to your website and it differentiates where it was coming from. So is it coming from your social media campaigns? Is it coming from organic search? So um, you can see where each person is coming from and how they got to your website. Um, it is crucial uh, to be able um, Google Analytics is crucial for understanding if your campaigns are being successful or not. And it is a great platform. However, it is very, very granular. It has a thousand different pages, a thousand different metrics. Like you're even able to see if your customers are new or returning, how much time they spent on each of your tabs um, and so many other things. So it does take someone to be certified, trained and someone who's willing to spend hours and hours on the platform on a weekly basis, daily basis, um, to see um, for, for someone to really be able to analyze and interpret all of these results and metrics. Okay, Google Ads are more complicated than you think. And this is an area that we want to talk about because it is more complicated. So when we talk about setting up goals, like we did when we when were planning a marketing campaign, it's extremely important because you need to know what are your company goals and because Google's going to give you a lot of options. Maximize reach, increase traffic to website, maximize conversions. Yes, all of them, you know, but each one has the pros and cons and each one is set to a goal. 
So it's real important to know your goal because you only can have really one goal per campaign. Um, and this will lead to the next one, bids. There's 12 different types of bidding and they are linking to whether you're gonna maximize reach, increase traffic to website, maximize conversions. There are different bids, but then you also have to know cost. So you have to do the research because they're going to ask you besides, you know, what type of bid you're going to, to um, choose, you're going to have to say, okay, you know, you know, I'm going to pay this much cost per action, or I'm going to pay this much for a conversion or for an impression. You need to do the, the your homework to look at the industry and and what those um, I guess benchmark costs are. Our next one is Google recommendations, and we tell everyone this is something that Google offers. And so when you're looking at your platform, it's going to be. Um, right in front of you, and they're going to give you a quality score. So basically, they're, this is something you have to look at daily because it can change 20 points in one day. So with the um, Google recommendations, they're going to give you like all the recommendations that you think to improve your campaign. But we say take that with a grain of salt because Google wants to make money. And some of these are just that, to make money. But if you know your goals really well, some of the you know, recommendations can help your campaign. Mm -hmm. So knowing those and knowing which to click, that you need to get your quality score back up because it's going to affect the price of your campaign. So they're going to charge you more for keywords if you have a low quality score. They're going to charge you, you're not going to be served as many impressions. And there's other key factors into the quality score that we talked about, like with your SEO. If a landing page is not working correctly, you know, if you have a site speed on, on a certain page that's loading slowly, you're going to get deemed and you're going to have a lower score. And it's not going to be part of the recommendation. That's something that you just have to really have a trained professional like Lab Media Digital who are able to dig and find out how do I get that to 100%. Setting up conversion tags in Google Analytics. That takes a trained web developer. And fortunately, we have access to a web developer. Setting up conversion tags means that you have to get this pixel, you know, put onto your website on a certain place on certain pages. Not only that, you have to set up you know, the metrics for conversions, and you also have to know Tag Manager really well. So basically, <clears throat> you're telling um, Google how you want to track these conversions and, and where. But also, you know, because Google is an ever-changing platform, and ever since I've been working with it, you know, the last 10 years, it has evolved, I'd like to say daily, because I think like a software engineer must have, you know, created this and it wasn't marketing friendly. So basically in the beginning, you know, like your search was just, you know, a few, you know, like maybe two lines of, you know, um, keywords and that was it. So now it keeps evolving and it looks like more of a marketing product, but you can go in and and like we were, um, I would say six months ago, if I was creating a new campaign and I go to the ads, every time I had to reload the logo because they didn't have a library to keep it. And any of the pictures I used, I had to reload. So I was constantly downloading and reloading. Well, three months, you know, a couple of months ago, I looked and they have an asset library. What they don't do is they don't, you know, they make the changes, but they don't communicate with the users. They just let you stumble upon it and then you have to do the research to find out. And I think it's because this company keeps growing and growing and growing. So, you know, setting up the conversion tags and even Google Analytics, you know, linking that. And then like what Alejandro mentioned, you know, you looking through a thousand pages for the data that's pertinent to your campaign is important and having a trained personnel doing it. And then we go back to optimizing and analyzing. So that's the end goal that once you start a campaign, you have to constantly look at it to make sure it's, you know, when you're optimizing with the right ads, you know, you're getting the more clicks, you, you know, if you're not getting clicks, are you getting conversions? And then analyzing the data, the data, that's real important. So we have people that are certified, you know, with Google Analytics and that are really trained at looking at that um, we look at it daily. We're looking at it all the time, you know, especially when clients are telling us like, you know, why is my traffic a little slow and stuff? So we have to look at the data and to come up with an answer and then a solution. And I think, Sandra, that's one of the best things of Lab Media Digital. Like what you're saying that Google is changing every single day and your quality score is going down all the time and you have a thousand recommendations. That's why we make sure that we're check checking every single client's campaigns 
every single day. We check it first thing in the morning and before going um, or in last time thing to do in the day, we check their campaigns, we optimize them and we make sure that everything is optimized. Yeah, and you have to go further than just the homepage. You have to actually go into the ad words as well as the ads because you know, you may have um, changes because of new rules from Google. Mm -hmm. And so that happens. Sometimes they'll, you know, ding certain words. Like, you know, we had a, a client that did consumer electronics and we couldn't use the word home because according to the banking, you know, if you put any filters on age or, or targeting, you were actually just, you know, that's a form of discrimination. So it didn't matter if you were in a bank, you just couldn't use it. So we had to not, you know, we had to redo all those ads that had the word home in it, even though six months prior it was approved. So there's constant changes. Yes. The next marketing channel that we're gonna be talking about um, is streaming TV ads. Um, streaming is also referred to as OTT CTV. OTT means over the top, and it refers to the streaming devices. So let's say your Chromecast or your Apple TV, those would be OTT. CTV refers to connected TV. Uh, so all the platforms where streaming is served, so Hulu, Netflix, Paramount, all of those would be CTV. Um, streaming TV is uh, refers to any media content, which is live or recorded, that is delivered to TV computers, mobile phones, uh, via the internet and played back in real time. So it's basically programming on demand access through internet-based um, streaming services. Recently, um, streaming has surpassed um, traditional TV and that's something that Sandra is gonna talk about more. Um, but the reason why um, it surpassed traditional TV is because of how convenient it is. People can watch whatever they want, whenever they want, no matter when the program was originally aired. Um, and that's why it has increased so much. Okay, so yeah, here's a chart that's gonna show you, and this changes monthly. So streaming television really had, I would say, exponential growth during COVID where everybody was you know, at home looking for you know, alternative forms of, of entertainment. But you can look, streaming surpassed, I think, last July, and we're at 34.1, and I'm sure next month that's going to be, you know, maybe close to 40. Cable's 31, broadcast 23, and then other 11.6. And I think it's like, it's not, you know, that the programming is bad on cable or broadcast, and we're going to see a lot of that programming is transferred onto the streaming, is that people like to watch it on demand when they, want, when they have time, it's convenient for them. Another feature or another chart, and this is really important and something Lab Media um, Digital really pays atten attention to is the top six apps that dominate time spent. So these are six top apps that represent almost 80%, so 78% of all time viewing. Yeah. So if you look at it, it's like Hulu, Disney Plus, Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video, and HBO Max. And the reason why is because of the new content. These platforms, really, that's what they, they specialize. You know, they're bringing you originals. They're bringing you newer shows. And so this has like replaced a lot of what I would say the network, you know, prime is because now you can watch it on demand that it's newer content. They spend a lot of money on the actors, on the scripts, mm -hmm. and it shows because they're the most popular. And it's going to keep changing, you know, as other streaming companies, you know, realize the, you know, like the popularity and how important it is, you know, that keeps changing. In our next slide, you're going to actually see, you know, there's over 250, you know, streaming apps. And so if you can look, you know, there's Hulu all the way down to, um, you know, we got broadcast nets, cable nets, streaming apps. So like what we mentioned before, you know, some of your favorite shows may be on ABC, but you want to watch them when you when it's convenient for you. But we always want to include the ones that more people are watching, you know, so we can engage in, in a larger audience base at any given time. And so a lot of the streaming companies will, they really concentrate on a variety of these, and most of them don't concentrate on the top six. Because like I said, there's 250, and a lot of them are genre-based, or they have different interests. And a lot of them are great, some of them are free, some of them have lots of ads, some of them, you know, like Hulu are limited on ads. And so it's really having a customized plan 
you know, so that we, when we talk to a client, because you may have a college that, you know, being on a mobile device is something that is desired. Yeah. Well, most of the time we want to be on the large connected TV where people are more engaged. Okay, benefits of streaming platforms. And I think we talked a lot about it earlier that, you know, having a large audience, as we know, connected TV keeps growing. I think there's a misconception that it really targets younger audience because 50 plus is their largest audience base. You know, so people want, you know, the various forms of entertainment. And I think that age group can afford it. And so we call them like cord stackers. So they basically haven't cut the cord. They just keep adding the streaming platforms on top of it. Um, but it continues to grow. And it's one of the most effective, cost-effective than paid TV ads. And I think we talked a little bit because all the audience targeting, the geo-targeting that you can do makes it cost-effective. Yeah. So there's not as much waste, but you can do it by interest, behavior. So we can really you know, target into your target audience and your location and serve ads. Increase completion rate with your ads. That's an area that um, Lab Media Digital really pays attention because there's a lot of streaming companies that will blend their connected TV, what we call short form video, because this helps them stay competitive with a cost per thousand. But we prefer to have a more, I guess, purist mm -hmm. form. So where it's more connected TV. And so connected TV, if we go to auction, you know, that the price range is going to be between 25 and 40. So when you get a low cost per thousand, it means they've blended in with some websites that are lower in cost, $7, $8. So it's going to lower your overall cost per thousand, but it's going to change the dynamics of your platform and your campaign. So we really pay attention to that. Um, layering in advanced targeting. We talked about this over and over again. The streaming platform does it really, really well. It provides over 35,000 segments. And I'm going to have a chart on the next page that's going to go a little more detailed. Approved reporting on ad performance. We talked about that. G targeting relevance. These are all important benefits. Um, QR code integration. A lot of clients like this. So most okay. people, they're watching television and they have their phone in hand. So putting a QR code allows them to scan the QR code and they can look at the promotion that they, you know, or go to a specific website or getting more information. So this is a really good tool and a benefit from streaming platforms. Okay, here's a look at the advanced targeting. And as you can see, like we talked about, you know, it's pretty wide net. So you have targeting tactics where you can do like the geographic locations from national all the way to custom zips and even congressional mm -hmm. districts. Um, in the middle, this third party data validates that this is correct information. So we're using TransUnion, you know, to validate credit score. You know, you're, you can look at Polk data to see who bought a Ford, you know, preferred Ford car over Chrysler or any other car model. But it, there's so many different third party data to validate, you know, the custom segment that we're looking at or the advanced targeting. And then the demos, we go all the way from income education all the way to like political affiliation. So if you're running for office, you know, and we need to just target the independents because you're going to get one vote or the next because whether what party you're in, we can do that. We can just target those people who are undecided. Um, first party CRM data, that's very important. So if you're a company and you have a large database and you want them, let's just say you're, you're getting some new promotion items that nobody's seen before, what we can do is we can upload that data. And it takes a couple of weeks because they're going to do a match on it but they're going to be able to see your ad. Mm -hmm. So this is extremely effective. And then you can also create like a lookalike audience. You're going to say, this is my audience base. These are, you know, most likely our customers. And how, you know, we can tell the system is like, we need lookalike. So what they're going to do is analyze and, and look at all the, everything that's the same so that you can create, you know, an advanced targeting on that. Yeah. Now here we have um, how the reporting for streaming would look like. If you would have to get something out of this presentation um, on the streaming side, it would be the benefits of targeting and reporting. When it came to traditional, um, traditional TV, you would have an ad during the morning news. You didn't know if Sandra was gonna watch it or I was, gonna, I was going to watch it. 
um, that is one of the most important things for streaming. But reporting allows you to optimize your campaigns and do better next time. Um, here is how it looks like um, at Lab Media Digital. We analyze your campaigns on a daily basis and we have um, real time reporting that allows us to do so. Um, the first graph that you can see, it has the daily delivery throughout the entire campaign, but you can also see that there's a yellow line and a red line. Those are called attribution, and that's something that you didn't have with traditional media. We can see, we can follow people for over 30 days to 60 days and see if our ads were served and they ended up going to our website during the next 30 days, or even if they end up, ended up going to our physical stores. We can see impressions, we can see um, if our ads were served on connected TV, phones, or computers, even though we prefer at Lab Media, we prefer connected TV. There are some clients that may want to have advertisement on phones, so then we would do so. We can see the hourly distribution, week part distribution, and as well as, of course, reach and frequency. Frequency is extremely important, is how many times the same person saw the ad. Um, and then we end up, we can also look a lot into geography, see not only state and DMA, but go all the way down to county and zip code reporting. And I think before you go, I, you know, this. Um, our reporting is completely transparent and, you know, that was one of our goals because, you know, like I think clients really want to see where every impression mm -hmm. bought, where it's going. You want to make sure that, you know, like you have even distribution, that all the money's not spent unless you plan it, you know, like to do an upfront buy, you know, but you want to look at all the metrics to make sure that the campaign is performing well. And since you can see every impression, it becomes something that's really optimal for all our clients. Okay, other forms of digital marketing um, that we offer and use widely for our clients, and this is going back to the beginning of the planning phase that we may look at, are native ads and pre-roll. So native ads, these are types of sponsored content that blends in with the surrounding content. Mm -hmm. So the, these are avatorial ads that appear on web pages, social platforms, and more traditional content like magazines. So is exactly what it's, you know, on the descriptions. These are ads that are written, you know, for our clients that appear to be looking like they were written for that website or that video. So they, they blend in. So if this example is like if you're a bank and you want to talk about, you know, your interest rates or any type of feature, we can target financial, you know, type of medium so that when people are reading it, they're like, you know, they're reading about interest rates and stuff. And then there's an ad, you know, or an article. It's not, a, you know, that appears to look just like it was written by that mm -hmm. publication or magazine. Pre-roll is another advertising um, that we use a lot. It's a paid promotional video that plays before videos. So a lot of times, like before YouTube, if you're watching your favorite show, your favorite YouTube how to video. videos, you know, there's a, there's so many content on YouTube and all in the middle of it, you have to stop because an ad appears and they're non-skippable. So this is what we call pre-roll. So they're usually 15, 30s or 60 seconds in length. And of course, this is something we would recommend in the planning stage. The last two marketing channels that we're gonna be talking about are geofencing and email marketing. Um, geofencing combines awareness of um, the user's current location with awareness of the user's proximity to locations of interest. So basically, we create um, a radius or what is called geofence around certain locations of interest, and we can serve as uh, when people enter or exit those locations. So let's say, for example, that you are MAC Cosmetics and you want to target people in San Antonio. We could create a geofence around Ulta and Sephora at the quarry so that whenever someone would enter those locations, they would get an ad served to their mobile phones saying, buy today the latest MAC lipstick 10% off only today. And you're like, oh, wow, what a coincidence. Like I just got into Sephora and I have this amazing lipstick promotion. Well, that is called geofence. Um, email marketing is another type of or marketing strategy. Um, and businesses send promotional messages to people in mass quantities. 
In its broadest sense, um, every email sent to a potential co or current customer could be considered email marketing. However, when we're talking about email marketing campaigns, we do send them in batches of what, a hundred to a thousand people. This, yeah. yeah. And, and the only caveat about this, these are opt-in. So people actually sign up to receive your emails. And so we're able to send them out in bulk because mm -hmm. they have been opt-in. And so like whatever platform you're using to send them out, they actually have a lot of filters to make sure you're not sitting spam emails. And so, you know, people are wanting to see these ads. And so we actually get really good open rates. Yeah. Um, there, are a, there are a lot of benefits for email marketing. However, some of the most important ones are that it drives traffic to the website. You can personalize it for each receiver and it is very easy to earn and analyze feedback. However, for an email marketing campaign to be successful, you need to have amazing graphics and a greater, like great content writing skills. And well, thankfully we do have that as part of Lab Media and 1797 Creative. So now that we're towards the end of the presentation, uh, in today's workshop, we're gonna be focusing on keywords. So we want you to think and answer in the chat box, um, what keywords would you add for a personal injury attorney ad? You have to think as a customer and as a marketer. Um, and then would you make those keywords broad, phrase, and exact? Remember that with this workshop and with what we're going to be giving out the tickets for the San Antonio FC versus New Mexico. So we are looking at the chat to see all of your answers. Okay. Um, no raised their hand. However, I don't know if we can give you access or allow to talk. Okay, let's see. Hello, how are you? I couldn't uh, write anything in the chat, so I would say uh, broad. Okay, uh, you would choose broad. What keyword would you make broad? What keyword would you, so what combination of words would you use for the personal injury attorney? Uh, just that, personal injury attorney. It has to okay. be two, two uh, words, so it could be more than two. No, that is awesome. Uh, it can be as many as you want. It can be one, it can be five. Uh, personal injury attorney could be broad. However, remember that when we're making broad searches, People can take um, the word personal or the word injury or the word attorney. So what if you have, uh, you find a, I don't know, marriage attorney. Is that what you were looking for? Or a divorce attorney. Or divorce attorney. So you would have to probably make that phrase. However, personal injury attorney is definitely an excellent answer. An excellent answer. You know, but there are other, you know, keywords that describe like personal injury. So most people will key in based on what accident they've been in, you know, whether it's, you know, I don't want to give all the answers, but like, you know, a trucking accident, you know, so if you're experiencing that, you may say, I want that type of attorney. Let's allow other people that okay. they're raising their hand. Yes. But please. thank you, Carla. Thank you. No, oh, thanks to you. Okay. Hi, Roxy. Were you raising your hand to answer? Yes, but she she uh, she took my answer. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear okay. you. So one of the okay. things that I would probably um, utilize would be accident. Yes. Okay, awesome. Yes. So you're looking for an accident lawyer? Yes. Okay. Or attorney, sorry, attorney. A yeah, a a attorney. And then yeah. maybe for negative even lawyer. those are those are both really good keywords for that yeah and like negative question. i would probably uh place um divorce when it comes to divorce that would be a negative keyword that would probably be negative oh, a negative okay. keyword i yep. would use would be divorce 
Awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be a great option. Well, thank you, Roxy. Let's see the next one. We have three more hands. Hi, Anthony. Hello. How are you? Yes, thank you. I, I'm, this is a, a fascinating workshop and only because I'm kind of knee deep in into uh, learning a lot of this uh, new jargon and stuff. And so I would say um, uh, exactly that. If you want to put injury uh, attorney or personal injury defense or something like that, then the normal layman person would just come up out of uh, you know the top of his mind. But a lot of the things like broad things, I would say like uh, personal injury attorney near me or personal injury uh, San Antonio, or personal injury attorney like Antera, you know, like where yeah. I'm, you know, and um, I probably would focus on those things and maybe try to come up with similar negative. But I think the broad matches with the, the those things always pop up, right? You type something in and boom, near yeah. me, and click on it just because it's there. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the keywords are so important if you're going to do the Google AdWords. Yeah, yeah. And that's Thank why we you. kept emphasizing you know, how important they are because you get to spend a lot of money or waste a lot of money. Oh yeah, don't I know, don't I know. Yes. And thank you, Anthony, because you're right. Um, sometimes we, we think as marketers way too much and we don't realize that, for example, me, since I'm not from here, if I were involved in a car accident, I wouldn't know that what I needed was a personal injury attorney. I would be like, hi, Google, I had an accident. Who do I have to contact? So you need to go back um, and think of like, what would people search for to look for a personal injury attorney? So all of your answers were correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, but most of the time, I think like the phrase match would work, you know, because you're they're looking at the exact phrase. When you put broad, then you're going to have to add a lot of negative mm -hmm. keywords so that you're not getting like what we talked about. But it's okay. an excellent answer. And let's have Andrea answer as well. And then we'll dive into the questions. Is Andrea, hi Andrea. Hello. Okay, then we'll go with Juan maybe. Um, Yes. Hello. Hi, Juan. Hi. Hi. Um, so just given the information, I guess I would put um, like best personal injury, injury attorney. That's awesome. Yeah. And would you make that based on what we said, broad, phrase or exact? Um, I think maybe phrase. Okay, that's a great answer. If you look for exact, maybe um, you're making it harder for Google to serve your ad. If you make it broad, it could be best anything. It uh, wouldn't have to be um, personal better. injury. Yeah. Yeah. So phrase would be a better choice of that one, unless you put the negative keyword. Yes. <laughs> But well, thank you uh, for answering. We are going to dive into the questions since we're kind of running out of time. Um, let yeah. me see. Does anyone have questions? Yes, we have three questions on the group chat. So the first question is, what is a good spend level for digital marketing? And can I just do digital marketing for two months and then stop? Or does it need to be continuous? You can answer this one. Okay. So what is good spend level? And that's what we talked about on the planning portion that we actually look at the keywords for your industry in that location. So it's real important that we find out what the cost of keywords because they vary. Like we just talked about personal injury and lawyers is one of the most expensive keywords to buy because how competitive, you see all the signs everywhere. They spend a lot of money in ads. And so they drive, the more competition, it drives the cost up. So basically that answer would be like, we would need to customize that two months. We tell every client, so you know, we have a minimum of three, but really six months because it takes time for Google to learn your account. You know, they actually crawl your website as well to see how relevant and how well you are a match so that, you know, they're going to give you your quality scores and stuff. So 
we have to let that work. So we're optimizing, but we're optimizing as well as Google is optimizing as well. Um, the second question is, are Google ads the same as Google My Business? No. And no, it's two different things. Both of them are important. However, usually you set up Google My Business once, right? Well, and, then, and you can edit it. So basically Google My Business is getting, you know, it's just a little snapshot of your business. And so you're putting pictures and you're putting, you can put testimonials and stuff, but it's, and that is like a free service. It's not paying for keywords and you're not trying to bid, you know, to buy those keywords. So it's quite different. Yeah. The last question is, what if I don't have enough budget for streaming and digital marketing? Where would I get more bang for my buck? Again, that's could be a planning because we would need to know your your industry and look at all those metrics and all of that data. So we would be looking at it. And we may say, okay, you know, email marketing. You know, this is something you do maybe twice a month. And whatever you do, there has to be continuity. You have to be doing it, or you're wasting your money. So you know, that's something that's a little more cost effective. But that's something that I would need to know your industry and to give you some more information. And we'll put our, our information is on the last slide. So if you want to get a hold of us, you know, and, and get some more detailed information or set up a meeting, we're happy to do that and talk to you. However, we um, usually recommend clients when they don't have a huge budget, we recommend them to start with um, Google ads. That's how people are first going to find about your business. Uh, there's times where uh, potential clients would come to us and they wanted to divide their marketing budget into paid search and streaming. And we got all the budget together for paid search because um, that's usually what increases um, awareness for our clients. Yeah. And but to this point, sometimes you can't afford it, but you want some kind of presence out there. And again, you know, we can make that recommendation for you because Google does have a commitment in, in order for you to do it right. Yeah. Um, then we had some answers, uh, which will we, will we take, we'll take into account. Thank you for answering, even if it was here under the questions. Um, do lab media charge for a consultation? No, we do not. So you can meet with us and we'll go through and talk to you and give you some recommendations. And then once you approve a budget, that's when- That's when we would start working. Yeah, and then we would give you the fees associated with it. Yeah. So we're happy to work with y'all. Um, we thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to talk about what we love, the digital marketing and, and how we do it differently from other agencies. Mm -hmm. And I hope you enjoyed our, our presentation. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and we also want to thank our sponsor, KCWX. Yes. TV. And the Hispanic Chamber as well for inviting us today. Thank you. Yeah, thank of course. You. Well, thank you so much, Sandra and uh, Alejandra. We really appreciate all your insights today. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed it. And just want to let you all know, we will be sending out a thank you email that will have the link from today's webinar uh, if you need to go back to it. Uh, also, we will be sending out Sandra and Alejandra's uh, contact information if you want to continue those conversations with them. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, if you need anything from us here at the Chamber, please feel free to reach out. Uh, so thanks again, and uh, we wish you all a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.